Half Race Plus Race with RWG Racers.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Welcome back, everybody. So let's finish up those bolt holders jig thing bobs for the bed. If you haven't seen the other video of making the bed, you should go watch it now. This is the bolts and the holders. Go. All right, boys and girls. What's up, everybody? So I have some Teflon here. These are actually pieces of Teflon that uh, a friend of mine he gave me these, he said they came from a place that made high voltage, high temperature insulators or something like that. Didn't really realize what this stuff was for a long time and then I figured it out. This was like five, four, well, three or four years ago I guess. But anyway, this is Teflon, so uh, PTFE. It's sort of a soft kind of plastic, but it's very high temperature. 260 degrees Celsius is a working temperature, that's the max working temperature. Uh, most other plastics that I were going to use was about 210C, so that's not high enough. And I had this stuff, so I've got a couple pieces here to choose from. What I'm going to be making is some thermal brake insulator adjustment knobs for the heat plate. So that's what I'm actually doing here. So I'm going to be using the mini lathe, and I'm going to turn these guys down, thread the centers, and make pieces that you'll see how they assemble when I'm done. So I've got some springs here. This is for the table. This is how the table is going to be held in place. I don't know where I'm at in this video. I'm just currently making these tonight. I'm going to be threading them with an M5.8 pitch. And I'm going to thread these guys. Um, and that's actually going to be my knob, my turn adjustment knob for my height. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm doing is putting outside jaw chucks in. So there's inside and outside jaw chucks. Some of them are reversible. These particular ones are not reversible because the, the actual thread in the back is cut in a particular way. So it's center to center and that's the difference between the ends here. So um, some of you may have no idea how this works and so I thought I'd explain it real quick. Uh, these basically have numbers on them. So that's a number one. So that very first digit right there, that marking is a one. So inside here, I will actually see if I can get you a shot so you can see what's happening inside of this chuck. Okay, so you can see inside of here, as I turn this, all it is is a helical thingamabob. It's basically a gear. And so you can see right uh, where are we? Right there. Okay, you see that? Right there. That's the start. Alright? So let me see if I can get this camera to stay. That's the start. So what you want to do is you want to take the number one. Okay? And you want to back it up a little bit. Alright, you want to start it. Then you want to thread it. You don't have to thread it until you see the next one, but... Right there, okay? Then you're going to put number two in, and then number three. And that's actually how you make sure that they're in the right spot. So these are machined um, according to the, the number, okay? So for instance, I could put either one of these in either one of these. It doesn't matter as long as I get the numbers one, two, three according to how they first start. So. Anyway, something a little interesting. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't know. So, outside jaw and inside jaw, depending on how you're clamping. First thing I'm going to do uh, is actually just get this thing down to the size I want, and then I'll machine the front and then do the cutoff. So basically I'm making a, a little knob doohickey. And I want it to be three. I want it to be a five M on the inside. Uh, so a bolt like this, a five M on the inside. I should probably turn this around and use the other side. So a five M on the inside, 
and then on the outside will be big enough for a small knob so we'll say probably 10 on the outside but I'm gonna have a feed through so we'll say like 14 we'll say 15 on the outside that gives me five in between and uh, then five for the bolt so that'll be a 2.5 millimeter thermal insulative break basically is what I want Alright, some of you are going to be like, Russ, why did you take this giant piece and turn it into this stupidly small piece? I have the material, so I'm going to use it. Um, if I purchase some of this in this diameter, it probably cost me like 20 bucks or less. But, whatever. Just thought I'd use what I have on hand. So I got this turned down to just over 15 millimeter. Now what I'm going to do is turn down a small section. Actually, what I'm going to do is move this out and then adjust this so I can get a bit more depth this direction. I'll probably actually just put it about flat. And I want to clean this up as far as I can back to here. I'm going to machine a little piece on the front here that's going to fit through everything so it needs to be the thickness of the plate uh, plus a little bit more so I think I'm going to give it I got enough material here I'd have to use all three of these pieces if I do it this way but what size I could do the same size as my springs might be a good choice we'll see what size the springs are and start there all right, so the springs I've chosen are about five and a half millimeters inside diameter. And then the bolt is about five millimeter. So that doesn't leave me much space. Um, so I'll have to think about this. All right, so I'm gonna make a lip that's just deep enough to keep this spring in place on the very end of this guy. Then the next section up I'm actually going to make all the way up to about 12 millimeters or so. So what I need to do actually is I'm going to I'm going to do it to an exact drill bit dimension so when I drill the holes there shouldn't be any slop. We'll see how that works. Okay so it appears that a 15 30 seconds drill bit if I can Get out of here. Okay, a 15 30 second drill bit is, I know I'm converting things all backwards, 11.8 millimeter. So I'm going to cut these at about 11.75 millimeter, and then I'll drill my drill bit hole with this guy, and uh, That'll, that'll basically make a nice snug fit, because what I want is a snug fit when I'm done.
Okay, so we've got uh, a depth here, basically five millimeter. I'm just using a bolt as a reference. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then our spring fits on there like that. Now that I look at it, I almost need to cut it. I almost need to cut that a little bit deeper. So I think I'll do that real quick. But basically our spring fits on there. We got a depth of this. Next we're gonna drill a hole in here and thread the whole thing. Then we'll cut it off. That'll be our top knob. Okay, boys and girls, so I'm going to show you uh, tapping. All right, so I'm tapping an eight, I'm sorry, a five millimeter, 0.8 pitch. All right, and basically how you look this guy up is just go to Google, because I don't have one of these printed out here. Go to Google, type in uh, tapping drill chart, and on this chart it specifies exactly what you want. You find the right thing, you find the right drill bit, it tells you what you want, you're on your way. So for a 0.5, uh, so a 0.5, I'm sorry, 5 millimeter 0.08, drill bit size is 4.2 or a 0.1654. Now, um, there are two different sizes usually. One's like a 60%, one's a 75%. So basically that depends on exactly what you're doing. I'm going to be totally honest. I don't know the difference exactly what, what the real difference is. One is tighter. I'm actually going to pick the smaller one. It says here cutting taps and forming taps. So there's your difference. So I'm actually going to be picking a .1654. 54. I only have a 0.161 and a 0.166, which is a number 20 and number 19. This is a drill bit, a numbered drill bit set. And you basically have the decibels on there. So I'm actually going to go with the slightly smaller one, which is a 0.161. The other one is, yeah, the other one's actually probably closer. But the reason I was going to pick the smaller one is because I really am okay with the threads being as tight as possible. So I am going to go ahead and pick the slightly smaller one, which will give me... Because this is Teflon, I really kind of want to do that. Also, don't forget, use the center drill and drilling holes. I got myself here a miniature tiny little bitty guy. Get in there, focus center drill that gets everything in the center as you're drilling don't trust your drill bit to stay in the middle it usually never does now a little trick for cutting soft plastics like this is basically just barely tighten the chuck on here enough to where you can still spin the tap freely and literally just spin it by hand to get it started this way you know it's going in straight just let that rest back there Alright, we got that tapped, Not maybe not all the way through, but maybe enough to where we get where we want. We can finish the tap after we cut it off. So I've devised this thing a long time ago. This is a piece of key stock that I drilled two holes to tap them at this angle, and then I can just put a cut off 
uh, razor blade actually, but I'm using it as a cutoff. So I can just mount this guy right in here and uh, I can just cut it off using the razor blade. So that's a little safer, you know, I told you what I did last time. You guys should have watched me bust my knuckles, right? They, uh, you know, there's a little skin still healing scabs now, but uh, this is really an interesting way to use a, a razor blade to cut off like I was trying to do in the other machine. I didn't even know I had this. I made this probably eight years ago. Alright, well those are apart. You can see a pretty bad bevel edge right there. I think what I'm going to do is uh, basically use this bolt as a little clamp. Clamp it in there. And just barely butter that edge off. This should work pretty well because this plastic is quite soft. Okay, well, this is sort of a mock-up of how it'll look, but uh, I think you get the idea. This is to hold my table in place, but also allow me to adjust the height with spring tension. Alright, I decided I want to cut this bottom section down further because what I plan on doing is adding a second spacer on the bottom side of this thing. So I need to make a tiny bit more room for that. Not much, just a little. That should do the trick. Okay, now what I'm going to do is make those washers, those little wafer washers. Okay, so I will say that as I cut them, they sort of wanted to bow. So they're not like perfect, perfect, but for what I need, that's perfect. So those are PTFE washers right there. Alright, so there's sort of an assembly. The aluminum plate, my heat bed, will be mounted between these two points. This is on the bottom, compressed against here. And... Um, yeah, that basically gives me a thermal insulator. The plate is a, this um, PTFE is going to be a thermal break between this stuff and this stuff. I really thought it was necessary to try to keep the heat contained within the plate. So, this is the way I decided to do it. I want to cut some grooves in here this way, but I don't think I'm going to set that up right now. Okay, looky there. I got all three of them. I only got a you know, little bit of shavings and some up here. It's a bit of a mess. But uh, they're all done. So now what I want to do is if I you know, put this on the thread and try to turn this, it is so slick. It's Teflon. You almost can't even grab it. And I want to be able to turn this. So I did what they call knurling, curling, knurling, gnarling, garling. I don't know what you call it, but you've seen this on certain tools it's got this hatched pattern in there all right so what that actually is is it's a tool that looks like this this is actually for the big uh, big lay that work I brought it home so I could just use this part but basically these wheels turn okay and they create that hatched pattern 
Now it doesn't cut into this very well and you need a lot of pressure to really do this correctly. So I'm going to temporarily set up something and sort of just do it by hand because uh, I just need a little bit. This right here is actually just enough. I actually I leaned it at an angle to get the top the more because that's really all I need is the top. So let's give that a shot. Alright so I told you guys in the past don't hold tools in your hand but I just cannot mount this and I'm cutting this very soft plastic. So I'm going to do it. hard to see because this one's not dirty but uh, although yeah it's still slick I can at least grip it now it's so hard to see they're in there just a little bit I was gonna try to cut it a totally different way and decided I'll just try this and I'm satisfied with that I'm not gonna adjust these too often so this works all right there are the goods so these actually do allow for a miss but also hold everything perfectly steady in place so I, the bed can be pushed down which I, I I like but I don't like the fact that everything's wobbly this allows everything to be stationary not wobbly and have some spring retention yes I'm happy with that those turned out very nice only a little bit of Teflon. Just a little. That might be worth recycling. Okay, so I totally forgot to show you guys in real life, not in 3D, what the actual stud looks like. So some people actually use um, springs and bolts and wing nuts to actually adjust the height of their bed. Now what that allows is for the bed to move around and I do not want the bed to move around. So what I've done is I've created this piece right here which is what is going inside the, the channel on the 80-20 and then this holds for a set screw right here. The other side has the bolt actually a screw through the bottom okay this is M5 hardware and then a nut that gets held in place by the plastic here and then the bolt sticks out the top. So what this allows me to do is this piece and the bolt, since it's all clamped together right here, and then the set screw holds it in place, this is a solid stud. It does not float around. That's very important. You do not want it to float around because then the whole bed moves while you're trying to print and that really messes things up. So that's how I got around the, basically the problem of, of the springs allowing the bed to move around. And of course everything is tightly fit, which you'll see in the next clip. Okay, so to hold the glass in place, I'm just going to use a M5 bolt, something like this. Will not focus, there we go. So I've just put mounting holes. What I did is I put the ruler here, measured out and marked all of my spots. And uh, I actually held this up against the bars on my 3D printer and got that's how I got this dimensional measurement in this direction. So I just drilled and tapped these guys and basically we'll just mount the plate there. I basically wanted to mount it close as I could to here so that the plate doesn't really have much room to flex. The only part that flexes is here because if it bows up and down with the heat change it will actually change the um, where, where at exactly the head it, the nozzle is against the glass so if it bows up you know a half a millimeter that could be very very bad. So these have to be mounted fairly close so should work okay guys so I'm assembling this um, what I wanted to make a note about is these parts have this extra little lip on them that I made for the heat plate alright the reason I did that is because they fit inside of these holes tightly so there's no play there's no play right here none at all 
And then on the bolts, I just dropped that one. On the bolts here, they're also affixed to this plate that I made that fits inside of the channel that's, that gets mounted with a set screw. So it, the bolt actually cannot move as well. So I'm going to give you an example of the problem that I've seen other people have and I originally had on my original printer and I didn't actually use the option that I wanted to because these springs that are on here for tensioning actually allow movement. And this movement right here is terrible. Very, very bad, this movement. So I'll put all these on and show you that it does not move. This together. And uh, as you can see, if I try to actually move this to left or right, it does not move. Get you a close-up so you can actually like see the edge, maybe. Try to push. Uh, against this rail here. So I'm actually pushing. You can see there's very little movement, if any at all. So there's definitely going to be no movement by itself. I can rub my hand on this thing and put force on here and it doesn't move. The only concern that I have, which is what I was explaining, when I put the glass on here, I had to put these mounting holes pretty close to this point because this bowing effect right here can see it's bowing. So if I try to heat this plate, it's going to expand and actually probably go down if it expands. And so if the glass is mounted fairly close to these points, this can actually bow. doesn't matter, but the, the glass itself shouldn't bow nearly as much as this aluminum is going to. So we'll just have to give that a try and see what happens. Let's mount the glass on there. If only I could actually move that fast. That'd be nice. All right, so this is not exactly what I intended with these washers, but this actually this actually works pretty well. There's not really there's flexing to be happening on the edges, but from like this point to this point, not really any not much flexing there. Heat can flex stuff pretty good though. So, give you a little close-up shot of those. What I really wanted to do was put a spring clip on here so I could sort of just pull it up, twist it, and let it go, and then pop the plate off, and then twist it, pop it back on. But I don't have much room under the plate, because I plan on mounting stuff underneath the bottom. And these bolts actually stick out a little far, so we'll see. I change that design. Okay, boys and girls, that's the end of this particular session. Next, we're actually going to be working on some other mechanical stuff and then moving to electrical. Keep watching. See you later. Leave a comment. Bye.